You get the bag and fumble it. I get the bag and flip it and tumble it. So speaking of having a good day, uh, <laughs> sorry, I, I know you haven't, haven't, <laughs> haven't had the. Uh, it's it's all good. So uh, anyway, uh, one thing I wanted to share with you today is actually that. Uh, so we were reading on a uh, stream today. Uh, it's a book called The Alchemist. I don't know if have you ever heard of it or no, sir. Okay, so it's by uh, Paulo Coelho, and it's essentially a a book on manifesting the things, thoughts, and energies that you want to have. Um, so, as cheesy and as corny as that sounds, we read the story of this young man who uh, this was like. Let's say it's probably like the 17, 1800s or whatever, you know, like we're talking closer to biblical times, right? So yep. this kid essentially, he wants to travel the world because he is born into a family that's relatively poor, but his family wants him to become a priest. And so he decides on his 13th birthday, he tells his father, hey, I don't, I don't want to be part of the priesthood. I don't. I don't want to be a priest. It's not something I want to do. And his father asks him, well, what do you want to do, son? He tells him, I want to travel. He goes, are you sure you want to travel that? Because the only, the only people who really travel are merchants and shepherds. And his son goes, well, I'm going to be a shepherd then. And he goes, well, okay, if that's really what you want to do, son. So he takes his grandfather's uh, carry bag with three gold coins in it and gives it to his son and he says all right son i believe in you go ahead and take this this was going to be your, your inheritance one day go ahead and take this and go and get your first flock and so his son extremely excited takes the bag goes to bed that night wakes up the next morning and heads out on his journey he buys his first couple of sheep and he takes off in whatever direction he thinks the nearest city is in uh, by the time he reaches his first city, he encounters this merchant who wasn't exactly kind to him, but he said, hey, you know what? I can tell you're new at this. I'll only take one sheep from you. And he goes, well, you know, I'm not selling the whole sheep. I'm just selling the sheep's wool. So he goes, okay, well, because I don't want you to che cheat me, I want you to shear this wool right in front of me. And so the kid doesn't have any tools to shear any of these sheep to give him the wool. So he goes, okay, I'll have to come back. So he leaves, and the kid takes the only book that he has uh, that he's been using as a pillow uh, because that's the only way he can, you know, sleep at night. He just lays on the pillow. Uh, well, he lays on the book and uses it as a pillow. So he trades the mm -hmm. book for shear tools, and then he uses those shears, and the merchant is busy at the time. So he talks with the merchant's daughter who comes up and wonders, hey, uh, I didn't know – I didn't know uh, shepherds could read. And he goes, yeah, of course we can. Like, I can. Um, and he doesn't. he's not really sure how to feel about her at first. He doesn't know if she's mocking him or anything like that. But TLDR, he befriends this girl. He really, really enjoys her company. The father comes out. He's like, okay, shear the wool for me. And then you can get out of here. So he shears the wool. The daughter disappears. She's gone. And then the kid says, okay, is that going to be it? He says, yeah, come back next year. So the kid takes his little earnings and he comes back to the village and he tells his father of his adventures and his travels and the places that he's been and the people that he's met. And so he says, okay, good job, son. So the kid eventually saves up uh, doing odd jobs around the town and stuff like that. And next year comes and he goes and he buys more sheep, getting ready to go and meet this merchant. Now, the only thing that he can think about is this girl and how pleasant of an experience that he had with her and he's like i just can't wait to see her and so along the way he's meeting multiple people and things like that and they give him the advice of well hey you're gonna run into a treasure one day one of these days you are going to travel and you are going to come across something that is going to make you in your eyes richer than your wildest beliefs and he goes well uh i don't see how that's gonna happen uh, but okay, sure, why not? Sure. And they're like, okay, you know what? We'll we'll guide you there, but give me 10% of whatever you find. And the kid goes, okay, yeah, sure, I, I guess, why not? And so he goes to this other village along the way, 
and he meets this gypsy lady. And so he had seen her before the previous year. It's just he had never spoken to her. And so she tells him, come inside, come inside. I'm going to talk to you. And she automatically knows that there's something going on with this kid. He's been having the same dreams every single night, right? And so mm-hmm. she she takes his palm and he, does, of course, doesn't trust her at first, you know, because he's heard, heard the stories about gypsies and how they rob people and how they're just, you know, they're just going to cheat you out of your money. And she goes... Tell me about your dreams. And he's like, how the, how the hell did you know I'm having weird dreams? And she's like, just tell me about them. So he describes this dream to her where he's with his sheep and he's out in the middle of a field. And so he knows his sheep don't, they're shy. They don't really like people. They get agitated very easily. But these children come over and they play with the sheep. And now he knows for a fact that sheep can't really tell how old a human is, but they're for some reason not scared by these children and so the lady tells him stop 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 you say there were children directing you in this dream and he goes yes and she goes whatever you tell me after this you don't need to pay me you don't need to pay me for for this fortune telling and so he goes okay so he continues to tell her the story of how this child leads him to the treasure that is under the pyramid of giza or in the ancient pyramids basically and she goes, well, you know what? For this, only give me 10% of whatever you find. And so he goes, well, I mean, I don't have to pay you anything because I don't, I don't, I don't need you to interpret my dream. I was going to go there anywhere. Anyway, and she was like, well, you don't know the way to Giza, do you? And he goes, no. Well, you don't know how to travel there, do you? Well, no. And he goes, well, okay. Good luck trying to find your way there. That's it. I don't need to speak to you anymore. So the kid goes, and he's really, really nervous about meeting this girl, and he runs into this old man. And so this old man, he's a little blind, looking a little homeless, but he's got this silver piece around his neck. And so the young man talks to him, and he go, and uh, he's like, he's telling him about all the people in the in the town square and stuff like that. And the old man asks him, "What book are you reading?" He goes, oh, well, you know, I picked up this book because I wanted to trade it for being able to have a a razor to be able to shave and get a haircut and all this other stuff because I'm going to meet this merchant and his daughter. And he goes, tell me about these dreams you're having. And see, so he's instantly freaked out. He's like, what what are you you talking about? And he goes, I want to let you know something. And so this guy picks up a stick and he writes down his parents' name. He writes down the name of the sheep. He writes down where the kid is going. And he writes down the name of the merchant and the girl and the merchant's daughter. And he goes, how do you, how do you even know all this? I've never told anybody this. And he goes, well, I'm the person or thing that shows up in your life when it is time for you to either succeed or fail. Um, and then he tells the kid that, um, there's only one realization that a human has in their life, and it's that a and it's that to realize that one's destiny is a person's only obligation. And so you are put in this world specifically to fulfill that obligation, not just to yourself, but to the benefit of all society. And so as he's trying to explain to the man, he's like, well, that doesn't explain any of this stuff that you know. The man is gone. And so... With that information, he ends up going to – he leaves the town with the realization that this may not be the path that he's supposed to be on. But because he's trekking forward anyway, he will achieve that goal no matter what. So I say all this to say that whatever it is that is a challenge to whether it be you, whether it be somebody you know – or rather it be anybody listening to this episode, uh, all you have to do is persevere and keep going forward. If you believe that it's something for you, if you believe that it is something that you are meant to do and put on this planet to do, you can not only not give up, but you I promise you, you will achieve it. So, TLDR, uh, I don't want to spoil the rest of the story because obviously we're going to be talking about it on stream tomorrow. We're reading more stuff. And then I think... Monday we're reading Will Smith's book. Um <laughs> starting a fucking nice. book club on stream. Um <laughs> Nice. 
But this young man does come to the realization that he has a much bigger picture to play in with these sheep because all these sheep know is food and water. And all they know is that by accompanying him, they receive that food and water in exchange for wool. So really, they have a mutual transaction with this young man. And they just, they follow him in every single thing that he says in his allegiances. So, you know, this is essentially a, a metaphor of if you're heading in the right dire direction, you're going to bring the people with you and the people are going to attract themselves to you that belong where and are able to help you get to where you're going so you know it's my little it's my little piece uh but with that being said um i also want to talk about uh the new tattoo i got so <laughs> yeah yeah i wanted to shoehorn that in there somehow um because i was talking about it you on stream. To get that uh, honestly that honestly it is and you know you and i have had multiple conversations about like you know not just tattoos and everything like that but uh also, oh, wait, hold on. Hold on one second. I think I forgot to change something. Um, yep, I sure did. Oh, boo. I accidentally, uh, I, I was messing around with my audio settings, and I accidentally put my mic on the same track as the Discord audio. <laughs> Ooh. But that's okay. I, the Discord audio has its, own, has its own track, so I'm not really worried about that. Um... Hold on, let me do that. Turn that off. There we go. Okay, I got it. Um, anyway, so, you know how I was talking about, you know, when I met GTA and we were talking about, like, tattoos and stuff like that? And I believe I had talked to you about it, too, and how I wanted the eye of uh, Horus on my shoulder. Yeah. Um, so, what I this is why GTA drives me absolutely crazy and, is because she, when I met her, she already had that tattoo and she, she had it in the exact same place. And so now that we're not talking, of course, now that I've gotten my tattoo, it's very uh, strange because it's like not every day that you meet somebody who wants to ha not only have, but already has the exact same tattoo that you've described in every single, like you already have it drawn out and it looks exactly the same. And all the way down to like a specific color or a specific detail that doesn't happen very often so i found it very interesting to tie in with reading the book the alchemist because some things in this book just magically align it just it just happens it just does and that's how you know you're going the right way and so i take this as a really a signal that i must be going in the right direction Finally, because I ha I'm also on the path of least resistance. I, ha I have not been, there hasn't been very much in the last two weeks that has gotten in my way of like me doing the stuff that I wanted to do. Uh, I haven't worried about parking tickets. Uh, my car is coming to get picked up tomorrow. I'm going to get the check for my new car. Uh, rent was paid on time. All of my other bills were paid on time. Like it's, it's crazy. Like, and normally when I come in here and I want to talk about, oh, Plank, let me complain about my life today. <laughs> uh, and it's usually 50 different things stacked on top of one mistake. Like one mistake will be made and it has 50 different repercussions. In the past two weeks, I have not had that situation happen. Nice. So, which, thank you. Which is, which is crazy. So, I say all this to say that um, I met up with Deacon and our homie uh, Satan which a lot of you guys know him uh, as Baldo. Uh, so I drove all the way out to Fontana. We got to, uh, me and Deacon hung out. We went to this diner. We we chatted it up. And uh, then we went to go to the homie's shop to, for me to get my tattoo. And he was so excited to see me, man. Like we, we, we hugged it out. And, you know, I was telling him the story on why I wanted to get it and like what it means to me and stuff like that. And... It was just so interesting because he was like, damn, like, you know, I wanted to give you your first tattoo. And I was like, yeah, but, you know, like the time wasn't right or whatever, you know, like it just wasn't available. But you're giving me my first emotionally tied tattoo. And so homie started crying a little bit. I'm like, damn, bro. You ain't... Come on, man. <laughs> so having your tattoo artist weep in front of you is probably 
Bro, he's kind of insane, really. I mean, I love this guy, but yo, 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 I'm supposed to be crying, not you. So I'm telling him the story of me and GTA and what that's like and why I really wanted to get the tattoo because I just wanted to get it for myself. Now I feel like I'm getting it in memoriam for a person, uh, which is definitely not true. Well, a little bit, but also at the same time, I told him that the pain doesn't really like i'm not really worried about pain he was like why wow it's literally only your second one like people are usually bitching at the first and second one and i was like well the pain of the tattoo is temporary but the feelings that caused the tattoo to be made in the first place have been long lasting if not permanent and he was like damn i was like yeah this this pain is temporary everything else is going to last forever so I'm not really, <laughs> I'm not really concerned with how painful it is. And there was a couple of times where like, it was, uh, I, I could feel my back being shredded by the fucking needle. Like, I mean, I, I love the result of the tattoo. It looks fucking great. I can't wait to get it touched up again. Uh, and then I left the, so on the eye of Horus, the pupil, the pupil is usually filled in. On GTA's tattoo, hers looks like the Renegon in the center and i've always mm -hmm. wanted that so i was telling him i was like oh leave room in the center because i'm probably gonna put itachi's eyes there and he was like oh well i could do it today i was like nah i think i'm gonna wait on it i think i'm gonna see where like the rest of the year goes or like how stuff play out already because you know it's like the eye of horus is already a symbol to me and like he's like oh so you want to get this assassin's creed one too i was like ah bro relax 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 <laughs> so uh we started planning out my uh sleeve for my right arm so i'm gonna get scars alchemy tattoos uh on my right arm and then on the left one like on the other side of my bicep i'm gonna get uh i'll probably get the assassin's creed logo there so mm. um and then on my calf i'll probably get the predator <laughs> from uh from apex <laughs> i get the predator logo even though i've okay. never reached that rank <laughs> But, um, yeah, so, I don't know. I, I thought it was very symbolic to the, to the time period, and I'm having a very um, interesting week. It was 91 degrees yesterday on my way to Fontana, and it was a thunderstorm, pouring, raining, on and off. Like, I stopped mm -hmm. at a gas station to get gas, put air in my tire, and, like, wipe my windshield because there was, like, nothing but dud and dirt and mud. Um, and when you're getting rid of a car, you know, for the past, what, six, seven months, you're not going to wash it for what? Like there's pieces falling off the car. Like you can't get it washed anyway. So it's like, might as well just be dirty. So I stop at this gas station. I get gas. I pump, I put the air in my tire. It starts fucking raining. I go in the car and I'm like, I just wiped the front of the fucking car. <laughs> like I was thinking like it was going to be good. Like there's no, no more dirt that's going to fall on the windshield so I can actually fucking see. I go in the car to get my jacket. No jacket in the car. <laughs> so now I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. All right. It's fine. Whatever. I leave the gas station. I get back on the freeway. The second I get back on the freeway, it stops raining. Mm. Fucking wild. And it's like, I roll down the windows because it's hot as shit. It's like 80, 90 degrees at this point. And then as I'm like getting closer, Deacon calls me. He's like, hey, what exit are you getting off of? You know, I'm about to be at the diner that we're meeting up at, blah, 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 blah. I was like, oh, okay. You know, I'm just a couple of minutes away and stuff. And I'm telling him what's going on. And he was like, he's like, wow, that's, that's weird. The same exact thing happened to me this morning. Like I stopped to wipe my windshields and then all of a sudden it stopped raining. I was like, bro, that's, that's fucking crazy. <laughs> so... I don't know, man. I'm having a very um, spiritually charged week, I could say. I, I feel like I could literally perform some type of fucking jutsu at this point. Like, I don't know. I'll probably go to the bathroom and be taking a shit. And then next thing you know, a shadow clone pops up or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> mm, nice. So, I mean, that'd be great. Um, but, uh, yeah, me and GTA are supposed to play games later today. So, <laughs> yeah, she Wait. emailed me like... 30 40 minutes ago yeah we were talking we were chit-chatting yesterday uh i was actually talking to baldo about this um literally while we were talking about my tattoo and he was doing it 
I was like, yeah, she's probably not going to email me back, blah, 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 blah. Like, we're not going to hang out. Like, she hates my guts, this, that, and the other thing. Which turns out that's not true. Because as I read the email, it stated the literal exact, almost like she was listening to the conversation. Like, if she was in there, she if she was, like, in the room. And she was like, hey, I just wanted to reassure you and let you know I don't hate you and blah, 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 blah. Sure, we can play games this week. It'll probably either be tomorrow or Sunday or something like that or whatever when I have time. I was like, and I didn't see the email until we got done with the tattoo, and which was like mm-hmm. maybe an hour later or something like that. And I was like, holy shit, man. Like, like I spoke it into existence. Like, while we were talking, I was like, yeah, she's going to email me back. Like, we are going to play games this week and stuff like that. We'll probably go back to playing GTA with each other and stuff like that. And, like, stuff will be chill. And I'm going to get this new job and... Uh, I'm gonna get a get a bigger apartment and a new car and all this other stuff. I truly believe that I'm accidentally manifesting these things. So that's why, you know, this is all relevant at all in the first place. So, mm. you know, I, I figured, you know, I would just share that with you. Thought you might think that was interesting. Share that, that with nice. the people. So, you know. I also bought some new Legos today. <laughs> <laughs> very nice i saw the uh super nintendo uh lego set and it's an actual working super nintendo that you build out of legos i oh, okay. yeah That's and nice. it plays uh mario well super mario brothers like i think it plays the first one so i don't know how that <laughs> works with like circuit boards electronics and stuff like that but i know there's a working piano one that gta has and she says it it works like an actual piano, and I was like, "What? Like, that's weird." So nice. But uh, the one like didn't we look at that one a while back? Isn't that shit like a thousand dollars or something? Like yeah, hundred. Um, I think it's five. I think it's five hundred. Oh yeah, it's five hundred. Yeah. That's that ba- basically a real one. Yeah. So, I mean, but if you're getting a a real piano for five hundred bucks, I mean, it's probably not a very decent piano to be honest with you. But you know. Uh, I mean, uh-huh. shit. That would be nothing. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say, yeah, much better than anything else. So, um, so that's what's going on, man. I'm, I'm very excited to continue reading this book to my audience. I'm glad everybody really enjoyed it. Uh, had a nice little story time this morning. So, you know, I've only ever made it through like the first seventy pages of this book before. I read forty on stream today. So. You know. Wow, okay. Yeah. And then after that we'll probably read Charlemagne's book. We'll probably um there's like another um Jordan Peterson book that I wanted to read. Um then there's one called uh, of course every almost every book I own has the word alchemy in it. Um there's another one called uh The Alchemy of Our Dreams, which is basically the uh it's like detailed instructions on how to lucid dream and how to manifest those things into reality. So that one's looking very, okay. very interesting. So, you know, we just, uh, we just doing things a little different. That's all. How about you? How's your week going? How are you? Uh, I'm good. Mm. I haven't really done anything significant tomorrow. I'm going to my friend's birthday party. Hmm. Okay. Um, uh, and, uh, I mean, that's going to be it. I don't know going back to doing exactly what you'd expect me to be doing which is nothing and this podcast Mm. okay okay well half of that is great half of that uh the other half half, is great yeah the other half is good so you know we fuck with it we fuck with it very very heavily i don't really um, do much to be honest hey man you know what you want me to start giving you assignments to do on a weekly basis because i need you to start probably a bad idea but (laughs) i just need you to start like editing more that's all Hey, as soon as we get back in the lab, 100%, I'm here all the time. Yeah, because, I mean, it's not like we're doing anything crazy or complicated. Uh, I'm pretty sure, did I send you the files for the Patreon names? I think I put that in the Canon Culture chat, didn't I? The what? Yeah, it it Hold is on, a file, it is a MP4 file of oh, all the that, Patreon. That, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, you have I the... I downloaded that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and and you have the Patreon Patreon info, right? Like, the intro? I, I, I believe so. If that was in the, the document, uh, in the mega file, 100%, I do have it. Okay, yeah, yeah, because all that, sh- all that should be in there. If not, you know, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. send it to, over to you. So, yeah, we'll probably, um, 
maybe not this episode, but I'll have you edit the next Patreon one. Mm. Yeah, if you're down to if you're down to do that. I mean, it's super easy. Just cut the beginning, cut a few parts in the middle if you want, cut the end, insert the two parts, and boom, you're done. You're editing. Crazy. So. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything that you want to learn specifically, like, to edit? Oh, no, just the basics. I mean, the basics for now, and then if there's ever a point where um, the basics uh, is is too easy or... I need to actually develop a skill, then probably. Hmm, okay. Well, I mean... For now, the basics. Okay. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Well, hey, man, you know, we'll, uh, we'll get you there. Don't worry. Uh, Then then... I need to get that fucking gameplay. Holy shit. I need to get a gameplay. (laughs) Yeah, I've, uh, started stocking up, um, on gameplay. But the problem is, every time I'm playing a game, it's usually because I'm streaming or recording a video... So my face is in the video, and so like I because I'm green screened in there, and I should probably yeah. not like have that. If it's like a Patreon episode, it's okay. But if it's like a regular episode, it's like it's not really okay. So, mm. but you know, I'm coming up with a with a little bit of a different plan for that now. Uh, so I'm gonna have the. Uh, you'll see it on this episode when I post it. Um, I'm gonna have our Discord names uh posted and they're gonna they're gonna be like in the upper left hand corner or something and they're gonna light up and the gameplay will be in the background so i'll show you how to do that um probably today so i'll show you after after this patreon episode but you know um anyway that's pretty much it for me today man it's it's thursday uh it's been a pretty good week i can't complain about anything they're coming to pick up my car tomorrow um then i'll probably pay two months of rent in advance and then i'm gonna get the new car this weekend or next week so nice yeah it's gonna be crazy man because uh i'm not expecting to like get anything too crazy so there's like three different ones i i I was talking to my dad about this yesterday so the first car i want is like the lowest it's like a 2014 honda accord or like one of those sporty civics like those look really nice Mm -hmm. um you know mostly for like gas mileage and like how long the car is going to last uh it's going to last me eons basically (laughs) and then the other car i wanted to get was a 2018 toyota camry sport which is like the one Mm -hmm. with the with the matte grill on the front and it has like a it looks really good i'll I'll have to show you a picture um so i wanted to get one of those it's going to be and you know what's funny all of these are around the same price because they're just so fucking expensive now everything is hugely expensive um that is true and the other one i was gonna get was which i'm probably gonna have to rule out because insurance is super fucking high on it is the 2022 um ford maverick xlt so i was gonna get like a it's it's a hybrid pickup truck so it Mm. it runs on gas and electricity so i was thinking about getting that um yeah and you can charge it at tesla stations so i was actually really hyped about that um but that one, funny enough, the truck is cheaper than both the Toyota and the Honda. Oh, the the truck start yeah the truck starting like if I order it from Ford it'll be it'll take three months to get here, and it's only twenty two thousand. The Honda the twenty fourteen Honda is twenty twenty five around twenty five thousand on average twenty five twenty six thousand a couple that are in the twenty eights nothing as low as twenty two. The Camry is in between twenty five to thirty two, depending That's on mileage. That's for a new car too. Interesting. Yeah. So, and I don't have to. I could go through a dealership, but because the way Ford is like changing the way they they're doing things, they're modeling it very much after Tesla, so they can like revoke or like take out the middleman that is the dealerships, and it also cuts back on their inventory. This is just what I've learned from like researching the car. Um, they yeah. want people to be able to order it so that way they don't have to give all of these rebates at the end of the year and into next year on like, oh, we'll put $5,000 down rebate on this car so that way you could just take it, which is what a lot of car lots do because they don't sell the cars by the end of the year. So And because car manufacturers are constantly cu- turning out cars, like it's like there's always going to be a car available. So And at this rate, now that 
the uh, chip shortage is starting to release a little bit and China is starting to uh, release some of the shipping and stuff like that and the ports are opening up uh, more and more, we're going to slowly get back into like being regular again, like where there's an abundance of, of way too much shit. But yeah, except for food, obviously, like there's a drastic food shortage everywhere, which is crazy. But anyway, uh, we're going to all starve. Uh, we're going to all dehydrate to death. Um, but at least we'll have cars. True. So, you know, we'll be Gucci. So I'm very much cars looking forward to that. Cards. Yeah. cards and graphics cards. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so... You know, I'm very excited for, for this new chapter. And then I was talking to my dad about my new apartment. And we're going to, to look at that next week. It's going to be a uh, two-bedroom, two-bath, um, which I'm very, very excited about. Um, <laughs> finally like, finally having an extra bedroom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You? So I'm going to turn it into my office. And then when my dad comes to visit, he can use it as a guest room. So Nice. Um, but, yeah, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, to the change. Um, now all I got to do is, is get this new studio job, man. I was just applying to shit like crazy. I think I've applied to maybe like 42 jobs today. Um, Mm, which is still rookie numbers compared to when OG was around. OG would have me like send her progress reports daily. Like how many jobs did you apply to today? And she's like, if you don't hit at least 80, 90, it's just like, you're not getting any pussy. And I'm like, fuck. That's crazy. I mean, I was broke at the time. Like, what more could I offer this woman other than hard work, you know? (laughs) So, but, you know, that's how this week is going, man. Stuff is looking up. Uh, I'm just trying to stay positive about stuff, man. Some. There you go. Yeah, I haven't uh, haven't cried at all this week. (laughs) Nice. That's a start. Yeah, it is. So, except for when I play Apex, then I'm just in tears, obviously. So, very true. Yeah. So, but uh, <laughs> that's pretty much it for me, brother. I don't, I don't have anything else to talk about. I, I was oh, just, what? I, this, something that was funny to me. I, I saw this today. Is fucking Ezra Miller is still somehow figuring out how to like fuck his life up. <laughs> uh, I, that guy is strange, man. Uh, I'm just gonna. Re- <laughs> I'm just gonna read this title to you, and then we can we can just make a a something out of this title. This title is crazy. Guns, bullets, and weed. Ezra Miller housing three young children and their mother at Vermont Farm. Sources claim the living conditions at the Flash Stars Farm are unsafe for children, alleging there are weapons lying around and that a one-year-old put a loose bullet in her mouth. And the, uh, okay. And the, the worst part is, I read the article and they have footage. <laughs> There's not footage, bro. That's the fucking worst part. You're you're fucking kidding. That's cat. That's gotta oh be cat. Oh my bro. god. I don't. I don't know where the footage is, but they apparently do have it. Wow. Hold on, let's see. I'm. I'm distraught. This guy is so fucking weird, man. This guy is Honestly, so fucking his weird. life is a fucking onion article. Like it's, it's just getting more and more wacky. First he assaulted motherfuckers, and now he's, and now he's, giving guns to children. Video footage shows eight firearms in the living room and a one-year-old baby with a bullet in his mouth. Bro, that sounds like that, that sounds like that's not real. That sounds like a yeah, that does sound like an onion article. That doesn't even Like who would do that? Like like that is literally something I would see on a fucking TV show. I would watch that I would see that on an episode of Shameless or something like that. Like holy shit, man. <laughs> this I'm, guy How the fuck does he I'm get away with all this just, shit? <laughs> not only did how does he get away with it, but what the fuck? How is this not child endangerment? Uh, how was this? I don't. I'm so confused. Is this a weed farm? Hold on. This can't be a weed farm. Mm-hmm. Miller's farm is not among the state's 25 licensed cultivators that are allowed to grow more than six plants and sell to wholesalers. Rolling Stone confirmed with Vermont's cannabis control board. There's no way he's got a drug barn. There's no way this guy is trapping out the fucking farm. Yikes. This can't be real. 
This guy is fucking insane. <laughs> he's, he's on a fucking drug farm with children and guns. I... You, honestly... It honestly seems unbelievable. To the point where it's like... There's... This can't be real, right? But with all the articles coming out about Ezra, it's just like... I could believe it. I think the worst part is I really could believe it. I, you know, I w it wouldn't put it... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't... Hearing that it's Ezra Miller makes me go, yeah, that sounds plausible. If it was somebody like Tom Hanks, I'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> so, you know, I don't know. I don't know, man. But... Yeah, that guy is... I, I can't... I don't even know what the fuck is going on with this dude. Like, how is it that you have... You're rich, you're famous. Maybe he's not rich. Maybe that's it. I mean, if you've got... I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so either. 100,000 air, maybe, or... He's definitely got <laughs> no, more money than me, for sure. He's definitely a millionaire. But yeah. I'm confused as to why he has a drug born. I'm confused as to why he continues to just get in these weird hijinks. You know... I think he might be bored. He's either bored or he was a theater kid. Mm. And uh, I, I don't know. I'm not going to say psychoanalyze Ezra Miller because I feel like that's just not a good, good idea. No, nah, I don't think that's good for your health either. <laughs> yeah, I definitely not. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking insane. I just wanted to, to say that because I. I couldn't find anything, but this popped up early today, and I was like, you know, fuck it. Just. Why not? He does some stuff that kind of turns my stomach. Like, is this a real human being? Like, like he's got to be a bot, bro. Like, this is, this is, this guy's not even a real person. He's definitely a lizard person, for sure. Yeah, I could believe it. So. I could believe it. Well, that's all I've also, that's all I've also got. So. But, man, interesting. Yeah. Rest in peace to that guy, man. <laughs> His career or just him in general? Both. Both. The, I, old, the I old, old version of him. I hope that whatever that man is doing, I hope he is sleeping soundly at night because he's going to get a very rude awakening one day. And it's, uh, I don't know. Who am I, who am I to prophesy these things? This is none of my business, bro. I can barely contain my own future. Fuck that guy. <laughs> So okay, yeah. So you know, hey, that's <sighs> we're gonna let him do him. Mm, yeah, just just the way he's gonna do it anyway, right? Of so. course. But anyway, we want to thank you guys for listening to today's episode of uh, all whatever this rambling is. But um, I'm trying to think what we're gonna call this. I I, I think we're gonna <laughs> manifesting trapping out the barn. T trapping out the barn, man. Wrapping out the barn. Yeah. What was what was that title again? He said he was uh Guns, drugs. Oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Guns, yeah. bullets, and weed. Ezra Guns. Miller housing three young children and their mother at Vermont Farm. That's the title. Yeah, we're manifesting guns, bullets, and weed. Yes, sir. <laughs> All the things. <laughs> All of the great things that this nation is made up of. But we want to yes, thank sir. you guys so much for listening uh, to another week. Please, please, please stay subscribed. Uh, we appreciate every single one of you. Uh, we honestly would not do these additional episodes or these additional videos without you guys, honestly. So shout out to Ezra Miller for giving us something to talk about today. <laughs> thank you, so, Ezra. Thank you, Ezra Miller, just yeah, collectively. Honestly. Okay. So, but uh, anyway, we want to thank you guys so much for listening. Make sure to keep it canon. <laughs>